Welcome to the Zep Report. How are you? Step right on in and find a clue. Step right on in at your own, um, uh, not peril, at your own living. Step right on in at your own um, survival. Step right on in and, and, and in your own blessing. Step right on in and save yourself. Step right on in and go up uh, 10 notches. Step right on in and be healed. Step right on in and know what's going on. Which isn't what the news says, which is not what the alternative news says, which is not what any news says. What's going on can only be really deciphered or read by people that are spiritually sensitive and they understand that's the real news. So anyway, our title today, Anything Can Happen. Yes, folks. I'm a great testament to that. Because just when you think it's doom and gloom for me, suddenly I'm soaring again. Much of the consternation of people in the hive mind who say you shouldn't be soaring again. Damn it. You shouldn't be walking around on your own recognizance. Damn it. You shouldn't be driving around in that car. You shouldn't, you know, and and so forth, or uh, kind of riffing off a discussion I had with our, a friend yesterday, and and uh, you 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 shouldn't be having that uh, meal on that. You shouldn't be able to to buy something nice. You, what are you doing? Ew, you're ruining everything. Oh, no, you'd think that was the dialectic from very wealthy elite uh, people that are gatekeepers to make sure that nobody that's a child of God gets anything except just a kick in the teeth. That's the real news. That's the real. And those then are also the gang stalkers. Always, 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 always. Now, I understand how difficult it is to get, you know, when, when I was just thinking about this last night, what could I say to shut-ins? People who, through no fault of their own, but just intense gang stalking and spiritual warfare, which is, of course, part and parcel of the same thing, just a, another way of looking at it, uh, who have had extreme events in their life, so much so, that plus the inner trauma triggering. Now, the most important thing you have to understand about this stuff is that the inner trauma triggering is what keeps you inside, not the actual event itself. It's the ability to go deep in, touch that fear cord, like, you know, when people have alien abductions, they report the same thing. They, that the, the big eyes are looking right in you, you know, if you have that experience, I'm, I'm sorry if you do, but if, if you do, they go right through you, those eyes. Touch that fear cord. That's the trauma, not the event itself. It's very extremely important distinction. And by the way, I gave it about 24-hour brain power. Okay? So you're getting, you know, some serious uh, computing power here and spiritual power figuring this out. It's not the actual gas lighting that does it. It's the idea that it penetrates what should be impenetrable, which is a daily cognition. You have a, you know, some armor on. Everyone does, whether they know it or not. Just otherwise, you'd go crazy with too much sensitivity. You wouldn't be able to stand the light of day. It's something that reaches in supernaturally like the alien experiences, the abduction testimonies, okay? And touches that fear cord that nothing can touch that's protected usually that goes deep inside, almost like it's got a generational right to do so. Touch that fear cord. And then even if it's just like them, you know, blocking the way at the supermarket or, you know, clearing their throat too much next to you in line or 
telling you 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 shouldn't be walking around or you know saying that they're following you or they know who you are any of those things or you know just in you know all kinds of other stuff cell phone towers whatever you know whatever you think it is that's not the thing you're all looking for like a a a cause and effect here while that gas lighting is going on there's something that's going through you because you're distracted with that and so that that thing that that's like a demon you know goes into you and triggers that fear cord once that's tripped i don't care how light the actual event is that's it you're done you're tr- it's it's pure trauma must find shelter and um why is that why is there access to that well it goes back obviously to you know it goes it goes very deep it may be also a generational curse but it goes you know very very deep uh once that thing is tripped it's like uh, kind of like they got you you know so every time there's even the slightest bit of weirdness out there it trips that same thing over again it's like it rips the scab off the wound but it's it's just a direct access to something that with most people, there is no access to that. There's a natural buffer. But with certain people that are uh, feeling like they're gang stalked or t- targeted or whatever, there's that, that seeming opening within them that goes right to that fear cord. And the next response is recluse. The next response is uh, no human contact. The, and, you know, and, it, and it doesn't completely help. The pain is still there. Because why? Because the thing that happened was not of human origin. It was not a human thing. The humans were used as, as, as theater, if you will. But again, it's like you look over here. Oh, look what they're doing. And then boom, that thing gets tripped. Because there's an ancient opening there, you know, probably with either parents, grandparents, somewhere down the line. And so, you know, if you give in to them, if you if you take the bait, become a Satanist, which is what they want you to do, um, then of course they say that they'll just leave that alone. In other words, that that they won't they won't they won't be touching that. I mean, people that know most people are stupid. So they don't know they don't diddly about anything. You, you know, you'd think like where I live is a really astute place. Nope. <laughs> Or Sedona, Arizona. Nope. In fact, those kind of new agey places are quite the uh, usually the opposite. People are really, really, really naive and really, really, really. It's amazing they're not uh, targeted. But the only reason is because there's no no reason to target them because they're already bought and paid for. So it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, that's like the majority of people I run into are sort of bought and paid for, and they're sort of. You know, they're sort of becoming more and more zombie-like every, seems like every year. And I think the reason for that is just because uh, in states of waking consciousness, they don't want, you know, um, people that they own mulling over in their mind everything that happened to them in life as if they're trying to find a way out, trying to find an escape. They want people to be complacent and happy in their their little lives, and then, you know, and then eventually they start atrophying, you know what I mean? It becomes, you know, watching the TV show and, you know, going, you know, rote, uh, you know, uh, outing or, you know, shopping or whatever. It's just this rote, uh, like Father Malachi Martin said, a perfect possession. And it is demonic possession. I mean, that's, if you're not in Christ, you're possessed. I mean, that's, you know, you're, 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 you're owned. Uh, that's even an even better way of putting it. You're owned. You see where people are going for exorcisms rather than going to the doctor for medical things? Exactly. They're, they're actually on the right track. They're actually on the right track. Whether or not the priests of the Catholic Church, uh, you know, the pedophile church, or whether they're going to actually give um, you know, uh, an actual exorcism is anybody's guess. First of all, you have to be grounded in the Word to do that. You're grounded in the Holy Spirit. So if, if you're you know, in any way... Uh, part of an organization that embraces the dark side, like many institutions do, you're not going to be able to do exercise, exercise a ham sandwich. 
You know, all you're going to do is, you know, you, you might cause someone to die by, by invoking, um, you know, the name of Jesus and a lot of other things. And, and have that faith or expectation something will happen, something may happen, the demon may win. And we've seen reports of people dying from exorcisms. You know, but of course, they were laymen. They weren't, they weren't priests involved, but they were laymen exorcisms. Um, let me just get this straight for you. Uh, we are all commanded to do exorcisms. We, we, the only standing that you need is to be grounded in the Lord, not part of the world system, you know, uh, separated, sanctified, and, and, and all that, which is a very huge doctrine in the Christian church, separation, sanctification, etc. cetera, uh, baptism by the Holy Spirit, belonging to Jesus, consummated, you know, you know, a son or daughter of the Most High God. Without that status, there is no point to attempting any exorcisms. <laughs> Not at all. Eh, some say because of John, you know, of Matthew 7, that... Uh, you can exercise in the name of Jesus. You might be able to, you know, do healings or, you know, I, I don't know. But casting out demons is a very, very important function and almost scientifically spelled out in the New Testament. It's very, it's, it's just a, uh, it's what plagues humanity. So casting out demons is just a matter of course. It's not some special thing. It's just an obvious thing, you know. And when people walk in the spirit, they get used to being able to not addressing the person that has the affliction, but the demon behind the affliction and kind of bypassing that, uh, that outer layer of, say, a person thinking they're a separate person and realizing there's a demon in control that needs to be addressed directly. And Jesus did that as almost matter-of-factly. It wasn't, it wasn't like some um, special ceremony. You could walk down the street, see some guy that's on the road, and just start talking to the demon. You know, and, and figure out what the status is. And also, there's another proviso in the Bible that, you know, if someone is really not willing, if they're not willing to be delivered, you know, there's no point in exercising anything. It's an exorcism. When you cast a demon out, it is an exorcism. Make no mistake. The Catholic Church makes about a hoopla. The exorcist uh, movie and Hollywood movies make a big to-do about it all, but it, it really isn't even that. I tell you, this was one time that the people that used to live next door, the woman that lived there, um, and you know, what are the odds? She was from where I lived in LA. Uh, what are the odds on that? She's, you know, a thousand miles away right here. Um, the demon in her started talking to me. I didn't have to talk to it. It talked to me. It bypassed her and she was just like, you know, and it says, you know, just like in the movies almost, it goes, well, so do you need Jesus to save you? Like that, and that kind of voice for a lady, you know, a woman. And, uh, I, I didn't want to toy with it because this woman being a witch, she didn't want to get rid of, she didn't want to get rid of her demon. See what I mean? So I couldn't cast it out. I could just try to, you know, and then, and then she was very rude the whole dinner. I only had dinner there once and it was just like, you know, an excuse to attack. And I just, I just said, um, yes, I need Jesus to save me. I am saved. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, and, uh, but it was just like this weird voice that was just jumping out and saying something completely non sequitur. Uh, so do you need Jesus to save you? It's like, you know, just like right out of the, right out of the omen or something, you know? And the answer is, uh, of course, you know, I didn't bother to go into what, what, are you, what, what is your, uh, what is your point here? Demon? I didn't do that. What is your name? Demon? What do you have a hold on this woman? Demon? Because why? Because she's not willing to get rid of that demon. And then she became after that feeble. A criminal guy took advantage of her and took all her money. She was in debt and in arrears. The house had to be sold or what little money there was left over to get a, some kind of a, 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 a old elderly care uh, in Mexico because that's the only place you could find that had, could take care of her seemingly for the rest of her life at a cheap price. And uh, so that's where she went. She had had uh, millions at one time, I think. I don't know. But she had a, a big place. She had money, but this guy was there stealing it. So in other words, other demonically possessed people, criminals, took hold of this woman's uh, household, were living there. They took her possessions. They took her china. They took a gun she had. They took advantage of the fact that she was becoming more feeble. And what happens when you 
agree to this sort of possession and agree to this thing running your life, uh, at which this is an agreement she made when she was a little girl, when she was like a teenager. Um, and it, you do nothing about it in your life. Eventually, when if you get older, uh, it will take over and then it will make you feeble and open. The demon would love to, to have a situation where criminals would come, take advantage, and almost took her out to the point where she had no money at all and would have been homeless. And her daughter came here to help her, you know, get situated. And thank God they, they found a place before it was too late. But she had had twice or she had had tons of money at one time. Not tons, but I mean, she was, you know, a, a, a retired and, um, you know, supposedly she had money in Italy, I think. I'm, I'm not quite sure of her financial situation. I didn't talk to her that much. But she had had some, some kind of nest egg or something. And she also had the, the equity in the house. But all that got burned up by later in life. And, and again, she had the opportunity to have that demon cast out, the opportunity to get right with Jesus. She, she believed, she said, she was like a Christian scientist, she said. But she, it, she, she passed it up and would, would rather play Satan's game, casting spells and doing things like that, rather than getting clean. And then once it got past the point, a certain point, the jackals came in. Uh, to finish off the carcass, the rule of the jungle. I don't want that to happen to me, but that's what happens. I mean, and when I say happen to me, I mean, you know, be shuffled off to uh, an elderly uh, facility. I, 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 I pray not, you know, I have no control over that though. I mean, I have control over it, but I mean, I, I have my prayer life and I, whatever, whatever God is going to dish out to me, that's what I'm going to get. And I'll be grateful for that. But I certainly don't want to have criminals taking advantage of me and putting me out on the, the whole idea with her is that put her out on the street, you know, with dementia. Okay. And no way of t caring for herself and no, and nowhere to sleep, nowhere to be. And, you know, from someone that was a householder to that level in just about six months, she should have taken the deliverance. She should have gotten right with the Lord when she had the chance. She, her wits would have been kept about her. I've, I've done a study of this, and I've seen the two sides. And when people get older, if they, if they have a relationship with the Lord, their wits are about them. And, of course, people that, that go another way, that rebel against that, it seems that they're, 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 the wits go. Now, not all the time. Sometimes you see people with, you know, with the Lord with dementia and all that, and, and it's... But I think the outcome is, is, is much more favorable because you're, you know, you, you're the son or daughter of the Most High God. Of course, the Lord takes care of you. The Lord is your caregiver. How many stories do we have of people in the Bible that go to these ripe old ages, much older than we are now? They have their wits about them all the way to the end. Right? That's a good, it's a good thing to think about. I mean, it's a good, it's a... It's, uh, definitely, like it, the other things are like here. Here's some of the concerns that you have: health. Okay, it's a great concern of mine right now because I have some health issues that I'm dealing with. So I have had to yield completely to the Lord. I went and did the research on various issues. Okay, and and you know it's various rather than one or two. And I've done the research, and and uh, I'm I'm ha I'm asking the Lord to help guide me. And so far, so good. The doctors on some of these things don't know what to do, say, or recommend. And some of the diagnoses that they make about, about you know, uh, whether someone is terminal, whether they have cancer, what they should do about their prostate, what they should do about their liver, their gallbladder, whatever, kidneys, uh, ulcers, basically the GI stuff. Uh the GI stuff, nobody knows what's going on, but they're very happy to get in there with a knife. Although if you have liver problems or anything like that, they're just going to say, oh, you've had it, you're done, and uh, you, you better get a new liver or whatever. I've also seen where licorice and different things have, have regenerated, even cirrhosis livers, fatty livers, whatever. But a better way to go is before something like that happens is to realize, you know, ask the Lord to help you to detox and take care of those things because those are the very things you need um, you know, to, to get through. It's one thing, and you know, this comes back to the, uh, 
to the targeting thing. You know, with, with people that are targeted, what happens is when they finally get shelter, they get they reach for a drink. And uh, this is hard on the liver. Okay, this is obviously hard on the kidneys as well. They reach for a drink um, to self-medicate because it's that's the only way out of that situation. And it's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. Uh, deliverance from this is a thing the Lord does, but it's, it's, you, you really, there's a couple of rules on this and, and rule number one, you can't take your, it's like, like Peter walking on water. You can't take your eyes off the Lord. You have to have your eyes on the Lord 24 seven to get out of that kind of a, of, of a mess where you find shelter, you, you, you finally get out of the fray, right? And, and, and then you start drinking because why? Because it's quelling that fear cord, which has very little to do with the actual gaslighting event or, or, or perceived events that actually happen. It's a deception. True. Uh, you know, I remember when this happened in, in, uh, to me in, uh, I mean, a big event in uh, Colorado. We were supposed to go to this concert and then all of a sudden we're getting the, somehow the car aligned and this Amco near where our hotel was and there were drug people in the hotel. It was a holiday inn, but it was like infested, you know. And they were all starting in on us. They were all, you know, disparately from not knowing each other, but, but hiving, hiving in on us. You know what I mean? And then the vans were pulling up, phantom vans, gore open. I just kept thinking they're going to try to throw us in there and kidnap us. You know, it was just getting, it was getting insane. It was getting completely saying trigger code words, all that fear cord tripped. And uh, then when they, when they did do the alignment, they made it so that the thing wouldn't even steer straight. So I told the guy to get in the, in the truck with me and look, go down the road. And I said, is that acceptable to you? He goes, no. And then he fixed it right. But they did that on purpose. Okay. I've had a lot of instances where they do that kind of thing on purpose. And it's almost like the redneck stories, you know, the, 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 the city slicker comes in, you know, from the North goes into the South into some kind of, you know, town and it goes to the gas station and get something fixed. And they, you know what I mean? They mess the, it's the same kind of thing. Did it on purpose. So I forced him, and you'd be proud of me, right? I had to stand up against the, the vans, the people in the, in the hallway in the hotel, people milling about, circling in like zombies. And in the midst of that, I made the guy go drive it. I made him see what was wrong. I made him straighten out that alignment so it would drive straight. Then what did I do? Concert? Nope. They won that one. Took off on the freeway, called a friend and said, what the hell's going on? And then she goes, it, it, this shouldn't be happening to you. This is awful. But it, do, it, it, it verified it's real. Drove like a bat out of hell all the way down from, I think we're in Denver, all the way down to like uh, Pueblo, you know, which is it's pretty much at the south end. I guess the next step after that would be Trinidad. Ducked into a, you know, a political thing was on, you know, this was a few years ago. I think it was like 2012. The political thing was on television on, you know, CNN was everywhere in the hotel. They had like a, like a, um, you know, an indoor thing, a little indoor bar or whatever. And, uh, you know, so I just, you know, I just uh, had a couple of drinks and you know, went to the restaurant and more drinks. And, you know, before I knew it, it was like, it didn't, I don't care what the TV says. I don't care if the guy says anything at the bar. I don't care anymore. Try me now course false courage but that's exactly what had to happen that and drinking had to uh, quell that awful thing that happened that was so supernatural so beyond and then had, thank god we had our friend that we could call and then verify that yes that that that's it you know that shouldn't happen but it did now that I remember very distinctly watching Anderson Cooper and that other guy discussing politics while I was, you know, getting anesthetized. And then, then my next response was, you know, a little anger. I want to fight back, but there's no fighting back by that point. Had a pizza in the restaurant, fell asleep. Next day, everything was fine. Like nothing ever happened. Took off in the truck. Drove, kept driving down in New Mexico. An event that was so beyond 
the movies so far beyond Hollywood, beyond anything you can imagine. You know, not, not you know, same thing would happen in my youth as well. You know, things like that would happen. People completely like not who they were, but people, the mechanic, the guy that ran the mechanic place, the other mechanics, the, the drivers by, the people at the gas station, the people at the hotel, the motel, whatever, the Holiday Inn, just all coalescing. Not possible. And so it's almost like uh, my, my scene on Sunset Boulevard when I'm, you know, 16 and I'm driving down Sunset Boulevard and all these people are at the edge of their driveway waiting for me to drive by, pointing at me in these mansions. I'm in a little Volkswagen. <laughs> oh, speaking your language, are we? Nobody understands, do they? Um, yes, it's very, well, when you go to explain it to somebody, they like to just say, tell me all about it. It's terrible. And they want to empathize with you as they start preparing the next carrot and stick action, uh, that will be coming your way, which has nothing to do with them personally, because they're not them. They're not who you knew in childhood. They're not your friends. They may be occupying that body of who used to be your friend, but that's not who you knew. It gets worse than that. I can, I can go way deeper into this than that. I mean, I can go 10 more levels, but then it gets to you know sounding like nonsense at that point. Yeah, the people that did that to you or, or that, you know, uh, case in point, I could drive right back to that Amco, walk in, tell them to align my car, tell them to go fuck themselves, excuse my language. You know, if they don't do it right, you know, having a little bit more of a macho attitude like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to go under that under that pressure. Uh, and, uh, and I've done that. I've actually, you know, put on that front of being, you know, kind of mean and, and tough. But it's just a front. It's not really me. You know, just like saying that cuss word made me feel like, oh, I, I'm stronger now. But, of course, that's the opposite, really. Um I've done that too to, to cope when there's no place to duck out. And it kind of works. You know, you can keep them at bay, right, with, with a bravado, with an attitude. But in general, our society has never addressed this problem because it is what? Interdimensional, supernatural. It doesn't exist. If you say it does, you're crazy. You need to go to the shrink. You need Thorazine. You need to become a zombie. We don't want to hear from you again, okay? And we need to discredit you. So if you ever try to tell anyone any of these experiences, we'll make sure you're labeled nuts so no one will ever listen to you. Have a good day. And by the way, we just ruined your life with a soft kill, okay? Enjoy. <laughs> I love it when I get to destroy people's lives with soft kill. They don't even know they're soft kill to like... You know, in their 30s, after they work at this, they work at that, everything's a failure. And then they suddenly just realize they're a total failure, but they're not. I did it. I, the, the, the demon, I, Satan, did it to them. I soft killed them and they didn't even know it. Look at them working like a dog. <laughs> Look at them struggling while everybody else is sailing through. Wahahahaha! <laughs> Okay, Brother Zeph. No, I am theatrical. You know what I mean? I, that's just me. I'm sorry. Uh, yesterday was just no call for that. You know, putting hashtags of screw you and delete yourself and all that. I just, I don't know what came over. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm, it's, it's not like that, you know, the brain dead, mind numb Christian that just goes to church, gets on, you know, Periscope and starts talking about, how in 2000, blah, 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 this and that may happen. It's not like that. It's like I'm really going through things. I'm really experiencing things, unlike a lot of compatriots who experience nothing. They have a prediction of the future. They had a dream. Well, what do you and do? I, I, I've got to survive the rest of this day. It's a little different than a dream. I've got to somehow get through this without becoming a shut-in without becoming an alcoholic, 
without becoming a drug addict, without becoming, you know, dregs of society, I've got to somehow get through this thing and slide through it the way Led Zeppelin does, or they bragged about in one of their records. Yeah, I think it was Houses of the Holy. You remember that record. Slide and slide and slide and slide. They over and over and repeat that. Well, what do you think they're talking about? Well, if someone alludes to this situation, I give them credit. Easy for them to slide through, but not not you. A little bit of a difference in uh, world orientation is there. You know, one reason they distract us with so much news is so we don't have this conversation. So we never get to the bottom of this. Because then, here's what would happen. Once you accept that this is real... The next step is the world falls away. Suddenly another world emerges, the real world. Then you realize what it really is. Then there's only one choice, folks. Yes, grab the savior around the legs, ankles, whatever, and don't let go. That's right. Jesus is the answer to all of that. Oh, man, you know, I can tell you, there's, you know, hmm, some of the incidents uh, that have happened were so mind-boggling, and and like I said, I have an internet dimensional bleed-through, I see into the other dimensions, where I can see there's like houses right there that weren't there before, and people staring at you out of those houses, I mean, it's been on that level, which I pray to God none, none of you ever have to go through that. That it stays light. But, it, it, you know, as long as you keep fighting, they're going to ramp it up. You know that. You know they're not going to just let you go, right? They're not going to just let you go. So what you have to do is go to the one that loved you first, to the Lord who called you, who made you birth born here to be a light under the world, and not for you to be running around hiding in little caves and, and whatnot. How about that movie, The Caveman's Valentine? Did you ever see that? Well, why do you think he had to drop out of Juilliard? Well, why do you think his daughter was catering to him and, the, you know, and, and saying, well, you could, oh, oh I see. Uh, he made a decision. It was, if you don't know that movie, it was a very, very, I was just so shocked somebody made a movie like that about a, you know, a, a homeless lamb really living in uh, Central Park or living in New York Park and, and in, a, in a cave. And most people just write him off as homeless and crazy, right? But they got into the nitty gritty about what caused him to be that way. And by the way, when he was in the bar drinking, the, the, the what's his name? You know, um, the black guy. What's his name? Who's that actor we like? The uh, well, We don't like his politics. Oh, you know, what's in your wallet? You know what I mean? Come on. The, you know, Pulp Fiction. Come on, Trish. Oh, I, I swear. No! How easy is that? You know who I mean, right? He's, he was in the in the movie. Well, it's highly recommended. It's actually required viewing if you happen to be any kind of... What? Who? Get out of here, Trish. Samuel L. Jackson. Okay? Samuel L. Jackson. For you, you know, people losing your minds. <laughs> Yeah, and he did a tremendous job. Uh, and when he finally got his job, he was at the bar at one point. And what do you think he did? He he got really, really drunk. He just was the one that drank more than anybody, being a lamb. Hello? Knock, knock, knock. Listen to the dogs. Knock, knock. Your life is calling. Hello. Knock, knock, knock. I'm not sitting here playing games with it. Come on, Chichi. Tell her to get up here. All right. I'm not being, you know, I'm not. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dasha. Get 
All right, I'm just realizing. This is what they heard. No, that's the. I knocked on the. Uh, Dasha. She's not going us. to accept it. It's us. It's us doing it. <laughs> so good luck if any if people even drive like a mile from here, she starts barking at them, ready to attack, and she wants to attack and bite them, which is. Uh, yeah, well, it helps. You know, it's the first line of defense. Then we have guns and everything else and baseball bats and uh, whatever else. And if that won't work, then, well, oh, well, we'll see you, Jesus. We'll be right with you. Anyway, bottom line, um, he drank. They had him characterized to a T. They really know. It's funny. These worlders really know how the lambs are. They're several steps ahead of the lambs. Did you know that? They know just how to characterize them, just what they would do at the bar. Oh, I understand. What do you understand? You're not being honest. You're not going to tell this guy why he's drinking so much at the bar? Trying to blot it out? What out? All the... What do you think he's trying to blot out? All the... A million amount of the torture in his mind trying to blot out the um, all the attacks going on from the people around him who are acting like they're doing something else, like watching a ball game. But they're really throwing zings and arrows and stuff at this guy, trying to get at the fear cord. And what do they want to do? They want to make him do what, what happened to me at the table a long time ago. I was at a table here, and they pulled this crap on me with so-called friends. And it tripped that cord, and I went jumping into the car from a restaurant table. They started laughing as I was getting upset. And then I ran to the car and, and you know, having like a panic attack. And I went out to this hotel at the edge of town and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and, you know, had some wine and tried to knock it back. And then I apologized to the very people who did it. And then they wanted me to jump through hoops and really... Straighten up my life. Do you understand the level of evil that I just described? Do you have any clue what level of evil that is and what should happen to people that do things like that? Of course they worry that I'm going to return with a gun and blow their heads off. Of course they do. But they figure I'll never figure it out. And if I figure it out, then they stay far away from me as they can. What's going on here? What am I describing? You got to understand the Zephyr Report is a supernatural thing. It's, there's nothing linear about it. It's just going to be what it is. It's never going to be predictable. Because you wouldn't be able to do it then. If it were. Oh, okay, gosh, jeez. Anyway, so what we need to do is prevent from becoming a recluse, prevent from becoming running to the bar, getting drunker than everyone else, having to be, you know, get, which is not you getting drunk so that you can, um, you know, so that you can uh, partay. It's you getting drunk to escape. Same with drugs, you know. The funny thing about drugs is they bring the episodes that you're trying to run from back front and center, especially if you do something like, you know, any kind of stimulant. I'm not judgmental on those things. I mean, I've, they will kill you. You know, speed kills, right? So that will kill you. Uh, vodka will kill you. All these things will kill you. But what's happened to you is so extraordinary that a hospital would give you, well, even anyone would give you some medication, because you've been tripped at the at the deep level, which they laugh at. They like doing that. And then it sent you into a whole series of things that are starting to happen within your body, within your consciousness. And so what you've had to do now is, you know, it set off all these events and you're trying to save yourself. You're trying to you're trying to survive.
it happened another time to me, you know, and there's some people to call it triggering, you know, they, they, they know that thing is there, so they trip it. It doesn't have to be a severe gang stalking, gaslighting, whatever. It's all gaslighting, though, with, when, you, when you're around. Um, you know, even polite conversations is fake, right? So, you know, the, the, they trip it, and then they see what you're going to do, and then they, they all kind of give each other high fives. Oh, yes. As soon as you're gone from the table, high fives all around. Good job. Aren't we superior? Oh, what I'm describing to you, the people that do things like that, they are called the dead. And for good reason, because they are dead. You're not. But you've got that trigger there, and as long as that's there, they can mess with you. And they seem to sense it's there, and then they go after it. Oh, yeah, you can act tough walking around and, you know, they, they'll still find out about it. You know, um, I suggest being, sometimes being really mean and rude is always, always an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, strategy. Because at least then, you know, you're proactive. You know, the other thing is they're brain dead zombies anyway. They deserve to be laughed at, right? They deserve to be punked. They deserve to be uh, belittled. They deserve to be derided. They deserve to be insulted. They're an insult to humanity just walking around. Of course, there's no quarter. But they feel the exact same way about you. You got to remember that. It's like a game of chicken. So somebody's going to blink. Usually it's the person that blinks is the person that's got that trigger there, that obvious vulnerability. And then it sets a whole bunch of things into motion and leads to uh, trying to uh, save oneself, obviously, from what's going on internally, because externally there's nothing you can point to that's so bad that you could go, oh, it's internal that got triggered, and then a series of events occur after that. Well, usually you'll never see the people again, you'll start over, you get a new job, you'll find a new friend, you know, a whole series of events. To make sure that never happens again. Meanwhile, you're going backwards while everybody else is going ahead. The level of unfairness is beyond Job. I said the level of unfairness is so far beyond Job because Job wasn't, that's, you're talking about psychological trauma here. Things that ruin people's lives totally. And they never recover. Job recovered. You don't recover from this. It's father worse than Job. It's worse than Jesus, too. It's worse than everybody. It's the worst thing that could ever happen to anyone. Because you don't ever recover, most people. Well, that's why people find the Lord. Now, when I say don't recover, I'm talking about, you know, civilians. I'm talking about people that are out there that don't know anything about the, this, this battle, the spirit. Usually, it, if, if a person is really sensitive and really a good person, it will funnel them into the Lord just by default to try to solve it. You know, so I can't say that it's, 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 it's forever. I'm just saying, left to your own devices, trying to fight it on your own, that's where you wind up, a derelict. There are plenty of homeless people and derelict people just in our society who just seem to be shell-shocked. You know, they're just talking to themselves and dysfunctional and through no fault of their own. It's it's that they were, you know, a demon-possessed, uh, manipulatable, feeble, uh, broken down, many times alcoholics, having dropped out of, you know, society. It's very, very sad, the amount. And, you know, the thing that I take issue with is the glee in which these seemingly good people take in triggering a poor lamb. And you see it in some movies, you know, here and there too. They take pleasure. Well, you can see it in Don Quixote. They take pleasure in winning and ruining a person's life, basically sacrificing them. And then they all laugh and high five each other while you take the bullet. You withdraw, you go hide, 
He tried to forget whatever happened. I am so glad that today I was able to say all those things because no one has ever said things like that in the history of the world. On the air, that is, with that kind of precision, I'll <laughs> put it that way. And I don't know if I could do it again either. It was just a lucky, you know, not lucky, but maybe, maybe I was led by the spirit to be to 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 use the the gift of elocution in a, such a way that it could really be painted very clearly, so that there could be no mistake. Oh, I would love to hear it. Usually, when I hear people talk about things like this, they talk about weapons and things and the military, and they're they're just we never get down to what's really going on, you know. I mean, so how could I? You know, yeah, you can have all that external stuff and hardware and military and different things and sure, cell towers and whatever, you know, but it's just, you know, it never gets into the what's inside a person. It never gets down to it. So let me make that contribution. I'm in no way can have solved it. It's going to take a wide range of uh, people dealing with this from many different angles to instill your, it's, look, the fact that it's still unresolved is is horrifying to me. The fact that nobody in these churches prepared anybody for this basic spiritual warfare 101, we have to call it this exotic thing now, when it's just basically persecution 101, it, it's beyond me. It's, it's criminal. The idea that you would let these people be soft-killed and suffer like that, and, and their own families would laugh at them while they, while they, while they descend to the gutter, is criminal. The idea that these people propping themselves up to be such charitable, wonderful people, but would laugh and high five each other at, at a complete destruction of a human being is insane. I have the distinct privilege of having people run from me and look like they, they've seen a ghost and with like deer in the headlights and screaming to get away from me. I mean worlders, because of the Zeph report, because it's, they've, they've listened, they could hear. They know that I know, so they figure I'm going to return, to, you know, they think I'm going to do something to them. Well, they feel guilty, and they feel like they deserve to have something done to them, right? Why would they conclude I'm going to, you know, what am I going to do, bump them off? That's what they think I'm going to do. And they run. All oh, pale as a ghost. They figured you would never figure it out. You would never get to the bottom line. You would never figure out that they were laughing and high-fiving each other as they kill you. You would never figure that out. But if you did, you'd come back and kill them. They'd do the same to you. You put a bullet in their head right now, no problem. They'd do the same to you. They just did. Different weapons, same result. Now, our Almighty Father is sick and tired of this shit. He is sick and tired of this kind of bullying treatment and, and destruction of people's lives. Our people are not supposed to be here fretting for their lives at, at every minute of every day. That is not supposed to be happening. The people of the Lord are supposed to be walking free upon the earth and, you know, and, and, and basically, it, it, you know, it being blessed and to be a light under the world, to be ambassadors of Christ. They're not supposed to be here trying to find some, you know, and then well, the worst thing is when people that say they're Christians, you know, they're, they're I'm, I'm just like you, Zeph, I'm your friend, and then they start in. And then, you know, you know, it's not them too. It's not them. You know, it's, it's a switcheroo. The reason no one ever discusses it is because they figure they're never going to, you know, be able to describe it because it's so beyond logic. But this is the nitty gritty, the satellite weapons, the beam weapon, this, that, that's not the nitty gritty. That's still subject object relationship, you know, cause and effect. You can't have a mindset like that. You can't have linear thinking to figure it out. 
we have to kind of bring in deus ex machina here. You know, you walk into what you think is your room, but it's really another movie set. And the people there are not the people you knew. Then they are. Then they're not. Then they are. Then they're not. Then they are. Then they're not. So when you say that, they go, you're crazy. It's not external. This is going on in your head. You're psychotic. You need medication. You need help. That's why you're self-medicating. Coming in from the cold, and we'll get you some therapy and try to get your interpersonal skills going and all these broken relationships, you know, this is because you have, you know, borderline personality disorder, you know, that we can help you with that. Now, don't you want to have friends? Ah, yes. <laughs> And what do you think these pathetic losers who are offering you things like that, what do you think of their lives? You know, what do you think of the fact that they, that a lot of the crimes they do, a lot of stuff they do is covered. Why do you think they become pedophiles? Because they basically have no, no, there's no stopping them. That's why. They'll do the worst thing they can do. They'll do as much as they can get away with because they're owned by the system. That means they're blackmailable because they don't let anyone in who isn't. And on no, even at the at the Seven Eleven, at the gas station, at the you know, at the uh, bakery, you know, it's, it's it's it doesn't matter. They're owned, operated, and blackmailed. Their job isn't to bake cookies. Is not to um, you know be a public defender. Is not to hold church and do weddings, and funerals. Their job, their only job is to police the people that ought not be walking around with, without being connected to the beast and punishing them severely for even if they're naive, even if they're innocent, and most of them are. That's why they're them, because they're innocent, because they're, they're, they're pure hearts. You know, the Lord said, blessed be the pure hearts. What do you say? About the pure hearts. I'm going to put it over on your side. Anybody? Trish? Huh? If you're in the chat room, tell me. I said, blessed are the pure hearts, for they shall... Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Correct. I, I just want you to know that that's... The pure in heart is the closest thing to God, seeing God. You know, there's blessed are those who mourn, blessed are this, blessed are that, but blessed are those pure in heart, for they shall see God. In other words, that's, that's as close to God as you're going to get. Pure in heart. And those are the people, 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 people who get targeted. Plain and simple. And if we could just keep it on that level of understanding. Now, now I haven't talked about stopping the drinking and all that. Yes, I told you that was it. I knew what it was when I asked the question. I was just trying to give a little quiz. Did you did that on your own without looking it up? Right. Oh, Trish is smart, huh? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And these are the people that are targeted. So we have one, you know, we can put that up on the board there as one. One clue. Likely targeting victims, the pure in heart. Because they don't, they, they're not initiatable into the Satan thing because they're pure in heart. Or they would be, right? So they see God. God keeps them pure in heart and keeps them for himself. Amen? These are lambs of the living God. They're sons and daughters of the Most High God, but they have to give their consent too. But I mean, it's, that's, what, that's what they are. Just that's what, that's what they were made Pure in heart is made, not 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 intended, not created, not self created, not uh, not um, uh, you know uh, uh, shaped. Pure in heart is made that way from the living God, from the from the very spark of creation. That's the pure in heart. It's a gift to the world, right? Because when you look at them, you see God. You know what I mean. 
And who's the first target of the gang stalkers? Pure in heart. Right? Innocent. That's numero uno. Whatever's closest to God would be the first target. What do you want to do with them? Soft kill. Why? So they have no credibility anywhere and there's all doors are shut because they don't deserve anything anyway. Why don't they deserve anything? Because they're not, uh, you know, slaves like us. They're not in the ranking. They're not ranked. They don't have a position. So we got to make sure they're stripped of anything good that happens to them. And en masse, that's our job to make sure we, we hurt them and hurt them bad. But then we'll never tell them that. We're very charitable. We belong to the Cancer Drive and the, the you know, Rotary Club. And we're, we're part of the whole thing. So we're, we're good. And they're evil. And we got to stop them. Otherwise, they'll hurt us. Better them than me. They will say. That's what they'll say. So do you need Jesus to save you? Yes, I need Jesus to save me. He, what is that, an idiotic question? What are you, three? You got to talk to them like that because that's the only thing they understand. You know, the, oh, they get freaked out. The other thing is, oh, if you don't want to talk like that, you're, you're a nice person, you're not a, a bully, you're not mean. I'm just talking about acting now. I'm not talking about you know becoming mean, but just throwing them off. You know, a little strategy here. If that's not the case, then what you got to do is this. If you're in a good mood and you're feeling good, you know, and all that, and you're, you know, flaunt it because that will destroy them. They can't stand to see you. Love. I've had people, uh, last time this happened to me was at a, I can't, oh, I can't think where. This just goes to show you how, how, how well they know you. Well, they know you. They know you personally. But let me, let me just explain how it works. So you're in this place and they go, and I, I mean, I was a f I, when I'm happy, I'm effusively happy. I'm smiling at people. I'm gregarious. I, you know, it's real easy to see with me. You know, whatever my emotion is, it's I, I'm just like an open book in that way. So um, then, someone behind the counter, someone somewhere, they they're they're there, and it's like I figure this is it's in a store somewhere. I can't ex exactly say, but I don't know this person that's about to speak. And they get the, they go. Oh look, he's, he's really, hey, he's really happy today. Let me let that sink into you for a while. Do you understand the level of that? Oh, he's really happy today. And what does that imply? That they know you. Oh look, he's happy today. I've never seen the person before in my life. What, are you watching me on closed circuit TV? Uh, in a way. You've been following the Truman Show for a while? Oh, yeah. Hey, look, he's happy today. God, that's amazing. You should be really upset. After everything, well, do you know something about me? Do you know something about what's been happening? Uh, button lip. Of course they do. The psychiatrist goes, now that's just crazy talk. You need to go to a loony bin. Right, because that's the quickest way to discredit someone. So you're dealing with a big, deep, dark secret of Satan. Okay, there's no technology that account for what I just said. Oh, look, he's happy today. No technology in the world that it can account for what I just said. There is no AI that can account for that sort of thing, that level. Especially when they all start agreeing. Oh, yeah, well, hey. Uh. And then they act like they don't know you real quick. Oh, no, we can't blow up our cover. And then, if I don't have my defenses up, that hits the fear cord. Bing, I'm gone, right? Oh, look, he just ran away like a little scared rabbit. High five all around. Yeah, buddy. Another one bites the dust. 
if you don't want this sort of thing to happen, you know, it doesn't have to. It's up to you. You know, you got free will, right? It's not my fault. Do you have any idea how much God hates that and hates that person that just did that? Do you have any idea the wrath? It's not personal hatred. No, no, it's, but it's, it's, it's a repulsive, almost like, a, like two magnets, right? It's a repulsion. Well, the future, there will be no people like that. Let me just put it that way. Uh, nor will there be a memory that they ever did exist. Absolutely, because they're parasites to begin with. They're not really a whole person. They're not like a person with a soul. But yeah. Oh, look, he's happy today. Look, lady, I've never seen you before in my life. It shouldn't happen, Zeph. It shouldn't happen, but it does. I'm sorry. It shouldn't be like that. You mean people that mean no one uh, any harm? They're just trying to get through being jumped on for no good reason. And then, and then if they try to survive soft kill, do you think that that's an actual, um, you know, that that's a really nice, if that's the world, that everything, then, you know, all the, the, the television, movies, buildings, stop signs, schools, institutions, so-called civilization, all of it is invalid at that point. It's completely illusory and invalid. If that's truly what we're dealing with, then you can cancel the rest of it. And that is truly what we're dealing with. Civilization is just a distraction to keep people from the truth. Now, this goes above the head of Donald Trump and above the head of uh, everyone I know on Twitter and above the head of everyone except you. For some odd reason, it's not above your head. <laughs> Well, it's not really above their head either. They just don't want to they, – they feel guilty when they think of it. You see, they, can you imagine how guilty someone would feel? Especially if they went through their youth and then their teenage years and their adult years and they, they just kept avoiding and just avoiding responsibility and just ducking under and kind of trying to, you know, just, just live another day. And, you know, they just – they got by. They got, you know – had their jobs and got their perks and they eventually forgot all about the evil deeds they did ruining people's lives and enjoyed the spoils given to them for a job well done indeed, which they thought had to do with work and being principled and raising kids. And they didn't think it had anything to do with rewarding them for what they had done earlier in their lives. How many people had to die to put you where you are, buddy? Oh, come on. You don't want to just ruin the party, do you? You want to ruin everything? Well, you seem to think it's fine to take perfectly innocent people and ruin their lives forever. Why shouldn't someone confront you? You think you're exempt from criticism? Exempt from guilt and shame over the, uh, the horrible life you've led with this little plastic sort of Disneyland front of, you know, a good guy with the 2.5 children and, you know... And the turkey in every pot and all the rest of this mumbo jumbo. You think that you're exempt from any uh, uh, criticism for uh, breaking the eternal law of, you know, trying to murder God's children because you don't agree, because it's your job, because that's what they pay you for. Then you thought that it would just be forgotten until the end of time. Well, here's me telling you that you are seen 1,000% clarity, like 50, 50, 50, you know, eagle vision. Every single little dirty thing about you is seen and known. Everything you've ever done on any given day is seen and known. And yes, pastors, you're going to hell if you're that lucky. But more than likely, your life will be turned into hell when this, when this little um, joke of a civilization uh, turns sideways. Then you're going to know. Some, then all your shenanigans and all your evil deeds, they won't pay on that day. 
No, nothing you do will save you. You can cry to Jesus a thousand times a day and say, I repent, I repent, I repent. Nobody home. No answer. No salvation. No help. Zero zilch and nada. You'll envy the mud that you're laying in. Not a life well spent, but a life blessed by the destruction that life has done to other people that meant you no harm whatsoever. So to allay the guilt, they become pastors. They become caregivers. They become helpers to try to even out the karma when there's when they're already condemned, they're already on death row. There is no, there, there is no way out. And they think they can even it out. When push comes to shove, you might as well just be your bad, evil self because I mean, you're, you, you're not going to, you're not helping yourself. You're not fooling anybody with this do good stuff. Don't worry, the jackals will be by to get you too. And on that day when they start carting you off and taking advantage and doing whatever they do, just remember all the innocent ones that you destroyed through the gang stalking, through this, 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 this policing, through this uh, hive mind crap, through the spiritual warfare. Uh, yeah, it's finally the, the chickens have now come home to roost. Maybe it'll be World War III with North Korea. And maybe the nukes will get loose. And the next thing you know, oh, my goodness. Uh, I can die. Can you? I don't think so. You better live a long time. You better never die. That's, that's the only way you get out of it, to never die. Okay, that's about it for my performance today. I uh I have to stop right there. I have to, you know, that was so good. That was like back, that was like going back to Zeph 2003 or four or something. You know what I mean? Only with more clarity. So I'd say, okay, let's, let's freeze that moment. I can't do it better. I, I could, I could embellish a few things. Yeah. There's a few other things I could do, but I, let's just quit while we're ahead. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's never going to be more crystal than that. Right. Well, it's painful to think about. I'm not, I mean, I don't have pain because I didn't do anything. I didn't go up to somebody and applaud when they ran from the table because you, you know, you, you, you did this kind of, you, you see, see the, the, you're, you're wrong about the gang stalking. You think it's this gross physical saying, a, a speaking of a word or something. No, what 90% of the gang stalking is psychological going on in the, in the ethereal spirit. It's what they're doing to you while they're saying trigger words and things, but it's, it's the, this, this ability to get inside you. Say, that's, a, that, that's where the crime takes place. Not the outward, oh, I know who you are. And, uh, oh, look, he's happy today. You know, those kind of things are to, to get the trigger going. And then once there, they go in and that's when the real damage occurs. Some people can't see the light of day. They're, they've been shut ins for life. Their lives ruined. No hope of marriage or family or a job. And none of the, it's none of their fault either. It is the fault, however, of other people who took advantage and, and yet remained hidden and never got the blame. And even the people involved in this blame themselves and live in shame and they're, they're afraid to show their heads out there because they feel guilty that they've been such a failure in life when it wasn't them at all. You know, and it's, it's, uh, the, the Lord wants me to speak this because I'm the only one who can right now. So, so you know, you're just going to have to, but I do know I did good today. I do know that in terms of, right, catch, capture, you know, well, the reason I'm able to do that is because, uh, you know, we're survivors, right? We're able to, 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 we mapped it out. Just never underestimate that there's an inner world that, that, that they're, they, they trigger so they can go in. 
it's like, you know, the invasion of the body snatchers. So they want to get inside you, make you one of them, and have you conform to the system, and then be one of them, right? Just like the movie. I think I think that one with Nicole Kidman, Kidman was a good, uh, pretty good remake of the old sci-fi thriller. And you know what I mean? It's just it's 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 all it's really a it it's really the author of of that movie is really making a statement about this sort of thing, right? You know, uh, people are running away from the devil. This is what they're running from. Up, he got you. Then you become a gang stalker. You know, you become a policeman. Look, you, know, you become, you know, a uh, devouring uh, monster looking for who you can devour so that you can what? Live because you're dead right now. But once they got you, you're dead. So then you need to feed on the living. So the only way you can feed on them is to traumatize them. In other words, ruin their lives. Make them go act up. Make them go take drugs. Make them go drink. Make them do all these things and then make them think it's all their fault. So maybe they'll be lucky and they'll commit suicide. Then you really get a pop. And that's um, the worst crimes that go on on Earth uh, on a daily basis by, oh, all good people. What's, I, I've seen all good people so satisfied I'm on my way. There aren't any good people, you moron. It's only this. There is no checkerboard. That's all BS. It's just this. What I described is right. Your stupid song is wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. You deal with it. Funny that John Anderson guy, he's all love, lovey dovey, love and light. No, he's a predator. I know exactly what he is. Well, they figure you're going to shoot up the mall because, you know, the guys over here, they're the same as the guys back in school. They trigger you. And then you have PTSD. And it's like, the you know, reliving Vietnam. It's, you know, the same gooks out there that were over there. And then you see them as the gooks that got you. And so you fight back and you shoot them all. Then you go to jail for being a mass shooter. No, that doesn't happen. Why? Because the Lord explains it to us. And we understand what it is. And no, we're not violent. And no, we don't advocate violence. And there is no getting even. That's why you must forgive it all. And that's the other thing. You got to depersonalize it. The people who attacked you and applauded and did all that stuff, it wasn't, I mean, it was them, a form of them, but it wasn't really them. It's what's inside them that's doing that. They probably worry that there'll be a reprisal one day for what they did. But, you know, um, I, I a long time ago figured that out. You know, I did try to retaliate when I was a teenager at times, you know what I mean? And then, People got scared of me, so maybe that was a good idea. But I dropped it, you know, after... after uh, I dropped it because I realized it's not them. It's this process. It's going to happen wherever I go. It, it, may, it won't be their face. It'll be a whole new face. It'll be, hey, look, he looks happy today. I've never seen this woman in my life, but she's exactly the same as the high school girl. Saying the same exact phrase. Never saw her in my life. Acts like she watches me on TV every night. She knows who I am. I don't know who she is. Are we becoming quite clear, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. Second half. Okay, here's what you got to do. And it's not going to be a half. It's just going to be a few minutes here. Number one, and I could say this without with and be a, be a failure with myself, but I mean I'm doing pretty good now. But I'm just saying I've struggled with this. You know, if you can help, not self destructing because of what they did to you that you can't prove, so you're stuck in your own swirling in your own nightmare. I understand that, but if you take it out with the with the, with the drinking and the drugs and, you know, running away from the job of obviously that's what you're going to get in the car. You're going to drive five States away. I understand because it's not, they, it's no fault of your own, but still the reaction is being triggered from deep down within you. And at the very primitive level, something you can't control because it's too deep. If there is any way 
to understand that the Lord is the solution. At least we can pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, please take these people to safety so they do not destroy themselves with substances and, 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 and seemingly reckless behavior because they're trying to survive through no fault of their own. Lord, please, justice for these people right now in Jesus' name, immediately, amen. So that you don't have to take it out on yourself. You don't have to whip and beat yourself for being a failure. You don't have to, um, you know, get drunk, you know, to get away from it that's within you anyway. To dull your senses so you don't have to be tortured and bothered by it. If anyone should be drinking and getting drunk, it's those people in, in, in the establishment who, who, who think they're doing good and wield all this crap on people who, who enforce this thing as a rule of law, not the law that you see in this joke civilization, but the real law, the real, real world that we're talking about today. And they think there's no problem having these people commit suicide, but yet they're the dead. If they got rid of all those people, there'd be no living left, only the dead. Well, would God sustain a world of the dead? Absolutely not. What is Satan getting out of it? Well, it would be game over for him because he did his, what he wanted to do, which is destroy humanity. Half the people walking around here are already destroyed. There's no redemption for them. The church is a really false message when it goes out and says, everybody come to Jesus. You know, it's like, yeah, right. Well, everybody, you know, everybody Wang Chung tonight. You know what I mean? Go screw you. I hear a pastor say that again. Never mind. I'm not going to threaten anyone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I advocate. First of all, you got to be at peace. You have to, if you understand what I'm talking about, then you don't blame the other guy. You, you've got to, you've got to realize when the attack happens, you got to be focused on that and shoring that up with the Lord. It can come from anyone, anywhere. Look, you'd be walking down the street, and Satan decides to use four people in front of you that are at the crosswalk to trigger you. Okay, so. They don't know what they're doing. He, they're being used as sock puppets because he has control of them for whatever reason, because they gave their consent. Okay, so fine. He uses them. They trigger you. You go run and hide. You go to the bar. You go do this. You go do that. You, you know, you, you move to another state. You, you fly somewhere. You, whatever it is you're going to do. Versus, nice try, sucker. You know, I know what this is. And uh, you know what? I'm not going to destroy myself because of you pathetic people, okay? I'm walking on and I'm getting, I'm going to do what I intended to do. And I don't care what you think. And I don't care if you even think you triggered me. I'm not going to give in to it. Because it's not my burden, it's yours. Plus, I put that burden onto Jesus. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. He carries it for me, so I don't have to. Ah, <laughs> I'm really happy today. I know you hate that. Come on, Seth, don't you want to be in harmony with your fellow man? Fellow? <laughs> um, I, I, when? When was that? Because I missed that. That that fellow man stuff. I I miss that. When was it fellow? Like brother man? When was that? Not bros, buddy. Not bros, man. Bros is bros. Not bros is not bros. What are you gonna do? The only thing that matters in this world is the creator of this world. His will, not my will. His way, not my way. His thoughts are above my thoughts. His ways are above my ways. To belong to him, I must pick up my, my, my cross, which means I'm willing to be persecuted. I'm willing to have them pull this kind of crap because I'm going with the light, with the Lord. You know, he's beaten this thing. This world doesn't matter anymore. I'm free. The reason that brothers and sisters are not getting that is because they're not being taught the real gospel. Otherwise, they would get it. The reason not being taught is because, you know, the, 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 the churches have been compromised, obviously. And so they don't want that message of self-empowerment. 
you to be able to handle those battles. They want you to come confess, oh, and this happened and that happened. Oh, well, tell me more. And they're just like, they're, they're just hyenas in disguise. You're like the zebra, right? They just, they want you to tell them all about it. One day, they're going to get you. And so, because of this kind of um, law of the jungle thing, survival of the fittest, the willingness of people to um, <clears throat> hurt one another, to boost themselves and not think anything about it. The idea of being shocked when a terror attack or some kind of attack comes, that they didn't deserve it, when they're a part and parcel of the very system that preys on innocent ones, is that in and of itself is more breathtaking than what I just described. The idea that they feel they don't deserve it is beyond belief. <clears throat> it's actually beyond uh, my ability to comprehend. I say that when you do things, you know that when, when blowback comes, you know you deserve it. It's like even criminals know that. They go do stuff. They rob banks. They rob a few more banks. They kill a couple of people, whatever. They know one day it's going to come back on them. What it does, they, they might fight it out, but they're not surprised if they go down. But these people, they act like they've never done a thing wrong their whole life. <clears throat> Pile of bodies behind them. What are you talking about, they'll say. But if they can ever be triggered, like you're triggered, uh, which they will be. You will see them go from false bravado, false courage, false everything, false brain, false body, false teeth. They're a nice set of false teeth, right? You'll see that. All their teeth fall out. You'll see them um, hurl themselves through the window. You'll see them commit suicide without moving. It's just why? Because, they, because when that finally comes home to roost, when there's finally... A reckoning. And God is nothing if not a, a, a reckoning uh, person. When that reckoning comes, it usually comes as one big day of reckoning. And when that reckoning comes, many will say, I don't deserve it, and double down on the hatred of God anyway. And then they will be... Um, dealt with. Karma's a bitch when it finally comes down. They have a little uh, kind of an artificial delay of karma if they if they get under that umbrella. Um, it's a, uh, there's a legal reason for that. I don't have time today to go into it, but there's an actual legal reason why there's a delay. Why well, you get yours right away, but they, they can stave it off for many years. Well, the Lord allows it because it, because when it finally comes down, it's maximum shock and surprise. And the Lord in the act of a day of reckoning is completely glorified on that day as pure light, as pure love, as, as pure power. So, you know, it has to be, you know, it, it kind of goes along with the legal reason why, why they say in the Bible, it says the cup of iniquity must be full and then the wrath comes, you know. So, it, so that's the thing on their side. That's not true with like, if you go out and break the law or something, you know, you're going to get it right away. I mean, normal people that go out there and do stuff, they get it right away. Well, you know, the thing is, I'm talking about the dangers in the world, and I'm talking about you know innocent people being set up for to be hurt by by people that are just, uh, you know, very shallow. Many of them. And, you know, very usable. So a demonic spirit can use them to, to, to hit the weak point of, of somebody just instantly, you know, flying to another town, doing something, trying to get by, not hurting anyone. But they see that vulnerability and then they, it, it, then they just go into attack mode. 
oh, they become your best friends. They buy you a drink at the bar. They do all those things until they can finally stick the knife in. Well, it eventuates in you having finding new friends after those after you've you've got to get away from those and then you run for I don't know how far and then you try again you know you go oh, I must have been mistaken oh okay we'll try again and then you have new friends there is no there is nothing more potent than that demon destroyer, Satan. And that's what I'm describing, Satan, basically. And his minions and what they do and what they're up to. You know, it's sort of like if the military gets some kind of advanced technology, what are they going to do? They're, well, are they going to use it to like feed humanity or give water to all humanity or something? No, they're going to use it to hurt the earth and hurt human for power. And that's just the same sort of thing. In other words, they, they have a newfound power that they're given because they, uh, they sell their souls. And then they, are they going to use it for good? No, they're going to they get more of a pop if they use it for evil. So they're going to use it for evil, figuring they'll never get in trouble because they see that, you know, there's a nice umbrella there. Well, make no mistake. A lot of what you call gang stalking is exactly what I described. I could go into even more intricate detail, but I don't need to. And it's all Satan's game. And it's all spiritual. There may be a... F I've, I've, looked, I've, looked, I've looked for... There is no purely physical reason for anything that happens on this planet, whether it be gang stalking or flying to the moon or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. There's no concrete physical explanation for anything. All of it comes manifest from the spirit, from the spiritual realm. You know, you don't fight the, uh, the, the stalking um, and bully, bullying. What we're talking about today is bullying and stalking. You don't fight that, uh, you know, mano a mano. You don't go back and, you know, find the people that did that awful thing to you and, and, you know, take them out. You'd have to kill everyone all the way back to Adam. You never get, you never get to the bottom of it. You have to be, you have to let the Lord inform you, guide you, and realize that you're not an awful person. I mean, that's the main thing. They made you feel awful because they use these powers they have against you to make you feel it's all your fault when it's none of your fault. Not one bit. You didn't do anything wrong. Hello? You did nothing wrong. 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 Why so ashamed? It's not yours to have. Get rid of it. Get your head back up there. You're not on death row a criminal. You didn't kill anybody. You didn't do anything. You didn't, you didn't need exact revenge on the people that did something wrong to you either. You know, you were a saint in that way. But you're in denial that this whole thing... <laughs> Maybe it doesn't exist, you know, maybe it can't possibly be that organized. They can't possibly, you know, plus how, how, how supernatural it was. Maybe it was just like a fantasy of mine. It must have been, a, you know, a delusion of some sort. You know, it's, I, I'm the one that's out of sorts, not them. Maybe I need more coping skills with people take a class or two. Or... No, nope, it's just the way it is. And, and nobody, the thing I hate about this country is that nobody educates anybody on what's going on, you know, how to fend for themselves. They just, they just have a one track mind, which is basically join the devil or die rather than, you know, can I live a life here? 
well, if, they, if they're honest, they'll just say they, you know, they, the ubiquitous they, they'll say, no, you can't. I couldn't, he couldn't, so you can't. Wow, he looks really happy today. Because what does that mean? Because usually you're bummed out, which means they're winning. Usually you look bummed out and concerned about things, which means they're winning. Usually you look bummed out and concerned about things. And so when you were happy that day, wow, he looks happy today. Because you're supposed to be miserable about things. Because they're winning, that's how they win, because everybody's miserable. What are you doing being happy? You know, the whole group here, millions of people here are miserable, and we're feeding on that. And what are you doing happy? Hey, look, he's happy today. You're supposed to be miserable, buddy. Like all the rest of them out there that you can't see, but we can. You know, we do see our food supply. All right. I think we've done it. I, I, I thank you for indulging me. Um, I, uh, how do I cope? Yeah, you might want to know how I cope. Well, what am I going to do? Usually I just put on, um, well, I throw my weight around. <laughs> I, uh, I'm very aggressive. I'm, I don't back down. And uh, I want to fight. You know, so I'm looking for it. And I'm not strong. A uh, friend was telling me yesterday I'm, I'm strong. I appear strong, but I'm not. I'm very vulnerable. So, but the only way I can go is either aggressively or not at all. You know, it's the Lord that's got to give you. If the Lord's with me, I can go do anything. There's no place I can't go. There's nothing I can't do. So I fling myself into it. I'll go somewhere, I'll fly somewhere, I'll do something. I've got nothing to be embarrassed about. I did nothing wrong. My main thing here in the last 15 years has been to survive myself. And if this is what it takes for me to survive and not be completely miserable and, and, and to have my wits about me and to be successful at things, then I guess I got to put an edge on. And if people don't like it or like me because they feel, uh, you know, dissed by me or whatever, I could care less. You know why? Because it's either, you know, it's, it's either that or, or, or I die. So, well, so someone's feelings got a little hurt. That's nothing. Nothing compared to what they've done to us. So excuse me, you know, I, I don't care if I step on their toes. I remember when I made this one bartender really mad. No, I wasn't getting drunk and hiding. And I was, I kept criticizing this, you know, their, their ability to not make a martini or whatever. Finally, they just sent me out like gin or vodka. I can't remember what it was. They sent me the thing out so I'd mix it myself. And they said, I don't want to ever mix for you again, the bartender. I said, you know, uh, guess what? Who Guess who's not getting a tip tonight? Anyway, we made her really mad. Remember that, Trish? And they, they, no, now that whole thing was about to go full gang stalking in there. That was at the, uh, I forget what hotel that was, the W Hotel in, in Westwood, I think. So if anyone knows that bar there, we're there meeting some friends. And uh, for no reason, she just got all uppity, you know what I mean? And, and she remembered me from like months before. So she just like slammed the thing in front of me. And I'm, I'm just like, I don't. I don't, you know, my attitude was I don't give a damn what you do. You can't make a decent martini, so that's what you're left to. It's too bad that's your fault, not mine. <laughs> and then I think at, at one point she didn't want to be out there even tending bar if I was in the room. And we were sitting at a table away from the actual bar in the lounge area, you know, there's like a restaurant uh, further on and then there were some chairs and, you know, it's, they're trying to make it look she-she, but it's just 
another nice set of false teeth. That's like half of L.A. Every hotel in L.A., even the Ritz-Carlton, places like that, they're just another nice set of false teeth. They're just faux this, faux that, faux everything, faux hotel, faux experience, faux people, faux. You know what I mean? Faux. F-A-U-X. So when you have an attitude like that, which admittedly it's a bad attitude, okay, but what happens? I don't get uh, I don't get bothered with because I'm not going to be going. Oh wow, look at that! Oh gee, that's you know what I mean? Because that's a that's a sure way to get knocked off the horse. When you have that attitude of, oh gee, look at that! Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, oh, yeah. the minute that you show, it's okay for them to do that, but if you show that kind of vulnerability. You will get knocked off the horse and it will hurt. You'll get bushwhacked. So you got to just keep it real. You got to keep, you know, you got to stay, keep your head in the game. You got to keep watching the perimeter. You got to keep at, you know, you're in a behind enemy lines. You have to just be, you know, have your wits about you is what I'm trying to say. Keep your wits about you. You've got to um, Know that Jesus Christ is your Lord. You know what I mean? And what matters is what he thinks, not what anybody else. And go get what you need to get done. You know, if you want something to eat or something there and you want to enjoy it, then damn it, you enjoy it. If anyone tries to move you, you just say, you know what, demon, what do you want? Just start talking to the demon rather than getting gang stalked. Rebuke it, tell it to shut up in Jesus' name so you can finish your meal. If the people you're with uh, take issue with that, let them walk out. Who cares? But that's kind of the attitude. Oh, I can't be like that. I'm just, you know, a gentle person. I don't No, I'm not talking about making waves. This is all internal warfare I'm talking about. I'm talking about protecting that core of yours from, it's not the, the events that happen that are weird and, you know, coinky dinky supernatural stuff. That's not it. It's the attempt to have you drop your guard on that core that they can trigger and then they feed off that trauma. All gang stalking is related to the same thing. It's all about feeding. No, they don't meet in some central location and you know divvy up the territory and everybody plays their part as an actor. I know they tried to set that up in the movie uh, The Game with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn, which is admittedly a pretty good gang stalking movie. But... It's got nothing to do with reality. Pure fiction, right? It's, it's they're, they're, you got to think David Fincher was a good director in some way, but I mean, he's an idiot too. I mean, they're all idiots that worked on that film because, you know, they had to externalize it all because they know nothing about the spirit. They know nothing about the truth. So they externalize it and have this big room where all these people are. You know, they're all, you know, the people that, that they've seen, they're doing this, and they, 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 there's the cop and there's the cab driver and it's all one big setup. That's right. One big setup. The guy in the TV starts talking to him, right? His father committed suicide, so he was kind of left on his own at a young age, made money. But he was never really in the club. So that came after him. Tried to ruin his life. The only thing he'd do is commit suicide, but then in doing so, he would be saved. And be one of them and be welcome. And finally, his initiation would be complete. Thing that didn't happen when he was young. Finally, he grew up. Took his place uh, in, the, in the deep, dark world of Satan. And everybody was happy. I'll tell you right now, taking your place with Satan is no place at all. It's, it's just death and second death and, and never having been. That's what it is. I saw this, these stupid people, this, this movie about these Indians in South America and the Amazon, how they have all the spirit world mapped out and they have all these kind of witchcraft witch rules they're doing and they don't realize, we know it's witchcraft, right? We know most of that, the witch doctors, witchcraft. Uh, they have all their ceremonies and rituals. They were going to kill these two guys. And, um, you know, they were explorers and they just wandered into the wrong thing and then, you know, they, they realized they were going to be put to death they're going to be drugged and, you know, killed and whatever. And it was all part of a big ritual. Um, I was watching a satanic ritual execution for the purpose of benefiting the tribe. They tried to make it into, oh, how awesome these primitives are. Once again, they lie. 
They lied. They're trying to tell me I didn't see what I saw with my own two eyes. You know, the noble savage business. Uh, we can't disturb these Indians. I mean, they're so precious while they're doing their witchcraft and their executions. And cannibalism. And they're trying to say that that's all okay. I mean, we, we shouldn't disturb them. When it's simply the same thing as spirit cooking. It's the same exact thing as Western sacrifices to Satan as well. No difference. None. Including certain ceremonial paint and get-ups and costumes and lights and whatever. Got two today, these explorers, yep. Well, we better find a place for them around here. The father and son were going to die. There's a movie that's out now, but I mean, what, what sent me a reeling was, uh, I see nothing noble about these people. I see they do what they want, do what thou wilt, and the Western world could only just salivate and want to be the same as them in the Luciferian utopia to come. Yes, they were going to sacrifice these two people because they weren't part of the tribe. And they were going to do a ceremonial sacrifice, which means they were going to try to appropriate their souls to the proper place, which they have no idea what they're talking about. They've just deluded themselves over centuries in their delusions of generations, passing on the same mythology and lies to the next one. No, thank you. I prefer the truth. Which that movie isn't. I forget the name, but it was called the city of Z or the world of Z or whatever. Yeah, that is Z in it, yeah. They're looking for this like last lost Amazonian, you know, advanced civilization or something that lived in the Amazon some a long time ago. And yes, we know all about that city that was there that disappeared in the Amazon. Basically it's like this. If there was an advanced city, they went decadent, they started sacrificing everybody they could. They couldn't keep it going, and then there was a, a fall of the civilization and a diaspora. And then they became the Indians later. They're still sacrificing people and, you know, getting their enemies and then cooking the carcass over the fire and then, you know, divvying up the meat among the tribe. And everyone says that's sacred and that's wonderful. I say, no, that's basically, to me, um, that shows that they're given over to the demonic and there is no light. So they can run around and spear people. And kill people and have their stupid little children running around the, the, the forest learning to do the same thing. And that's the entire of their life. I feel sorry for them. With absolutely zero curiosity of what's beyond this world or what this whole thing is about. No, they they feel what it's about is what they're doing. is all their rituals become what it's all about. I suppose that's fine. You, know, you can live like animals. But when two explorers get caught... And then they're going to go ahead and sacrifice them, probably eat them. Uh, it is what it is. Yet the people in the movie, the director and the writers of the movie, wanted to glorify that as being this precious thing we shouldn't disturb. In the end, they're going, oh, look, in the end, we're all the same human being. Whether it be in the jungle here or anywhere, we're all the same. You see, we're all the same. That's a code word. We're all the same, code phrase. All the same. We need to have reverence. These people may have a beautiful religion. It's just hard to see that when they're chomping on a, uh, you know, on a thigh bone or, a, a, you know, or an elbow. <laughs> you know, seriously. And yet they tried to pass, they tried to, they tried to fool me. But how many millions of people did the filmmakers fool? Everybody! So when they start in on that, that crap they do, knowing that they're those people that made that film and who have a completely skewed view of the world, knowing that they're completely unstable in all, in all their ways, knowing they're completely double-minded, Knowing they have no life at all except this sort of 
propped up, uh, you know, movie set that they think is real. Knowing that that's the way it is, what's my response? Uh, not not giving in. I don't care what they do. They can try gang stalking. They can say, oh, look, he's happy today. They can say that a million times a day. It's not going to move me one inch. I'm going to, you know, and I'm not coming for them. I, I, I pray the Lord they stop it with other people. It's funny, when you finally have an edge on them, they don't come after you. Law of the jungle. It's only when they see that vulnerability they come after you. Isn't that funny? So you got to do everything you can to get rid of that uh, that signal that goes out that says, hey, I got this thing. You can trigger it. Free food. you got to not let them have that. Law of the jungle. Don't let them have that. Well, some years ago, I used to just be kind of, you know, above it all or aloof, you know, it was kind of an act I would do, you know, but it, it kind of worked. But at this point, I don't act. I am thoroughly disgusted. That disgust is real. And that reality, that being real, seems that that's the saving grace. Getting down to it rather than acting like uh, Pollyanna, oh my God, look what's going on, every time it happens. Instead, it's more like, hey, take your best shot. I'm a child of the Most High God. What are you going to do about it? You know, you go home and drink. I'm not going home to drink. If I drink, it's because I feel like it, not because you moved me or stressed me. I remember one person, tell me, I remember when my, my mother would tell me, you know, when the biggest gang stock was going on, like citywide, you know, like all of Los Angeles. And it was just like such a nightmare. And then she goes, so you look a little stressed out, honey. Tell me what's going on. When, you know, she was part of it. Oh, the stories I have. Uh, you wouldn't believe. No, you wouldn't believe. But it doesn't matter. You know, if they're all looking out the window at you at three in the morning, it doesn't matter. If they're waiting for you at the airport that you fly to, it doesn't matter. They don't know each other. All of that is completely interdimensional, supernatural, all designed to get that fear, to pull that ripcord of fear. And then the result of that, the trauma that you produce and the adrenaline you produce is what that's what they, they're after. Okay, lesson over. You got the best of me, folks. That's it. I, I told you about that movie. What was that? The Lost City of Z. I think it was called The Lost City of Z. When you see it, you'll realize they're trying to normalize. They're trying to normalize cannibalism. I, I, no, no, seriously. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> And just remember this, a lot of people on that dark side who will be used against you, they have no clue who they are, what they're doing. They're just there to be used. They're just sock puppets. You're not going to give them respect as you know, a human being when they're a sock puppet, right? You're going to move them the F out of your way and move on. We're the children of the Most High God. We're not. I mean, if you're a child of the Most High God, you have as much right to be here, maybe even more than the dead. So enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Every once in a while, someone would talk to me off stage and say, well, you know, do you like being a laughing stock? And I say, I'm not a laughing stock, you asshole. And when you give it back to them like that, then, if, you know, then it strikes that chord in them. And then, you know, you can sometimes have a conversation. And I, I'm like, no, I don't need you. You know, I don't need, I don't need anything or anyone in this whole situation. I don't need anything. I just need my Lord that I have already. So what's your point? Do I care if they laugh at me? No, I could care less. You want to laugh at me? Ha, ha, I'm laughing at you. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, I'm laughing at you. Said so they're laughing at me. Look, I'm laughing at you because uh, you're so pathetic. Uh, hang up now, please. Thank you. Goodbye. 
that's basically a conversation I had with somebody that's a used to be a fairly kind of famous person working with multiples or working with, you know, deprogramming people. And then he was the biggest gang stalker of them all. Used to be a guest on Frank Whalen, this guy. What an asshole. I mean, you know, even beyond someone like Art Bell, you know, which is hard to believe. <laughs> it's hard to go beyond Art Bell in the asshole department. It's, it, I mean, that's, that's a real skill. But he's a mean guy, Art Bell. He's a mean guy. And he's a strict enforcer of the stuff I'm talking about. He is, would gang stalk you in a New York minute. He's not your friend. I mean, he wasn't your friend before. Probably killed his wife. You know, that's, that's a lot of us uh, had that feeling, but you know, can't prove it. But, uh, you know, then he's off. He gets married to some teenage, you know, Filipino girl or something. It just smacked of, reeked of, you know what I mean? Bump her, the old wife, get the new, you know, a little girl, you know, it's, it's pedophile stuff. You know, just, eh, ridiculous. Oh, that was all, that was all there. But he was allowed to function. Mean guy, though. Very, very mean. Fit right in with his mean producer. What was her name? Lisa Lyon. Mean people. And worlders, every last one of them. And when something happens to somebody, you know, if there's somebody that's sensitive, it's you know, having a struggle with all this, they just laugh, these people. They, they think it's funny. They laughed at me in that same way. They laugh. And yet, how many people were tuning in? I guess it's George, Nor George the idiot Nori now. How many people tune in who have this problem? In other words, it's not your friend. I and mean, you tune in because you're lonely, maybe. But I mean, my God, my God, man. It's, it's, you're just kicking the can down the road. They're going to bump you off that horse in two seconds. Because you're not prepared. Because you're still giving quarter to the world. You're still giving you're comfort to the enemy. You're still inviting them in. You're inviting, as Trump would say, you're inviting the snake into the house. And the snake's going to bite you. So that's like 99% of the people that suffer from this all the time. They're inviting it into their lives. Why? Because they still think they got a shot at the world. There is no world. Seriously, there is no world. There is an illusion of a world, but there is no actual world. It's just a uh, smoke and mirrors at best anyway. You know, better to, rather than to be so ambitious is just, you know, have common sense about, you know, someone needs something done, you go work, you ply your trade, whatever. You know, you're, you're under no illusion that, you're, you know, there's going to be some big payoff somewhere. That's all. I see these guys, you know, drunk out of their minds, hanging around the liquor store, the gas station liquor store, you know, buying the lotto thing and, you know, getting, you know, getting the little, the short one, the you know, ones they do every other day, you know, just hanging around and hanging around trying to get that, you know, and that's, it's just really very, very um, sad. But part of that, part of that and part of these guys' desperation has been because, you know, probably early on in their lives, they were, you know, they were, uh, this kind of stuff affected them and, and maybe it didn't, they, they, they reacted in a way, you know, in a human way, not, not reaching for the Lord, not helping with prayer, not, not ultimately inquiring of the Lord, you know, but, but, you know, on their own recognizance and, and it turned them into kind of, a, you know, desperate, desperate figures. So I don't want to see that happen to people. You know what I mean? It's really, really, you know, the Lord says the meek will inherit the earth. Blessed be the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Well, this, these are the meek. These are people that cannot usually defend themselves. These are people that, you know, you say a cruel word to them, they're very sensitive. They will go cry about it or, you know, they, they will take them out of commission. And then, and then given the nature of this really supernatural, awful thing that happens, uh, could, you know, and ha does ruin lives. Like I say, if it creates a shut-in, it's ruined a life already. You know, that's, that's, that's the victim. You know, they, these are the, the, the victims of this evil upon this earth that's allowed to run rampant. And, and, and like I say, if you describe it, you discuss it, whatever, uh, you're the one that's, you know, you need help. You, you know, 
more soft kill, you know, more hurt. The reaction is double down on hurting that person. So I'm done. Okay. I will see you guys next time. Thank you. I've, uh, uh, I've said all this in an effort to get, to get you to rise above this situation. It really is a rising above in the Lord. You can't do it on your own. It's in Christ. That supernatural power rising above and stop putting yourself below the rest of humanity, okay? A lot of these people are, you know, they're, they certainly, not only would they not give you any, any respect as a human being, but they don't respect themselves either. You know what I mean? They, they should be corrected, not lauded. Okay. All right. Is this the, okay, let me do this. And I'll see you next time.